Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we are going to learn about the physiology of external and middle ear. Ear is a special sense organ that is responsible for hearing or that is responsible for the conversion of mechanical energy of vibration into electric potential. Ear consists of three main parts: the external ear, the middle ear, and the internal ear. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about the external and middle ear. We are going to the first slide. In this slide, we can see that uh, the external ear is represented by the black color, and the middle ear is represented by the blue color. The blue color represents the middle ear, and the black color represents the external ear. The external ear ranges from the pinna to the tympanic membrane. This is the tympanic membrane or eardrum, and this is the pinna, the outer part, which we can see with the help of our eyes. So from pinna to the tympanic membrane is the external ear. The pinna is the external part of the external ear, uh, which we can see with the help of our eyes, and which is just like the shape of trumpet. I'm going to show you. Uh, this this is the played surface of the trumpet, and this is trumpet. So the uh, pinna resembles this trumpet, and uh, this is to receive the sound waves. How this receives the sound waves, I'm going to uh, tell you in detail. First, uh, I'm going to show you the label diagram. This is the helix. Uh, this is called anti-helix. Uh, this is called the ear lobe. This is called the soft part of this uh, auricle is called ear lobe, and this is the cartilaginous part. Uh, this is the auditory orifice. This is the auditory orifice, or a hole which leads to external acoustic meatus. This is called auditory orifice, uh, and the diffusion which leads to auditory orifice. This diffusion is called concha. The sound waves must come through the concha through the to the uh, auditory orifice and that will go through the external ac uh, acoustic meatus to the eardrum so the auricle which is the external part of the external ear this is a uh, auricle and this auricle the uh, anterior surface of the auricle consists of large number of hairs and large number of sebaceous glands which secrete sebum oil like secretion the posterior surface of this ear or uh, this uh, auricle consists of the posterior surface consists of what it consists of large number of sweat glands why this consists of uh, sweat gland on posterior surface and why this consists of uh, sebaceous gland on anterior surface because the anterior surface uh, consists of uh, sebaceous gland which secretes sebum and sebum is oil like secretion and oil has the speciality or property to absorb the sound waves while the posterior surface consists of uh, sweat gland which secretes sweat and sweat is uh, can sweat contain large uh, quantity of water uh, or um, salty solution or saline so that uh, saline or water reflect the sound waves that reflect the sound waves or that rebounds the sound waves while the sebum do not rebound the sound they absorb the sound waves why why this uh, this is an anterior surface and the uh, sweat is on posterior surface because when the sound waves come and strike the the anterior surface will be absorbed over here that will not be rebounds or reflected why the, this is not uh, reflected or rebound because if the sound waves are bouncing with the uh, anterior surface it means that the sound waves can will also come and uh, come in contact with this concha and if the sound waves are coming uh, to the concha that will that will eventually lead to uh, the external acoustic meters if if the sound waves are going to strike this helix anteriorly it means that this sound wave will also uh, strike this area this will also strike this area and that will go through the external acoustic meters but with the posterior surface of the helix it means that that will not that sound is not going to uh, strike this area 
that is not going to strike the the concha because that is that, that that is striking a posterior surface so the posterior surface is made up of a large uh, that that consists of uh, sweat glands and sweat glands secrete sweat so the sweat will rebounds or reflect the sound and that sound will eventually go through this area and that will go through concha and and that will go uh, lead to the external acoustic meter so the sweat gland is to rebounds the sound or reflect the sound and the sebaceous gland is to absorb the sound so the this is external acoustic meter external acoustic meter i am going to write it first of all the auricle the second is external acoustic meters so the external acoustic meters consist of this is external acoustic meters which is which is up to 2 inch in uh, length um and uh, among this two inch one inch is the bony structure and one inch or less than one inch is the uh, cartilaginous uh, uh, surface or cartilaginous uh, boundary this is the cartilaginous part of the external acoustic meters this uh, the, which is less than 1 inch and this is the bony part of the external acoustic meatus which is uh, up to 1 inch this is 1 inch uh, in length and this is less than 1 inch this is the temporal bone which gave the bony structure to the bony part of the external this is the temporal bone uh, and this is the uh, cartilage which uh, gave Uh, cartilaginous uh, part of the external acoustic meatus are which make the cartilaginous part of the external acoustic meatus the uh, whole ex external acoustic meatus consist of hairs on the surface consist of hair on the epithelial surface so these hair uh, avoid the dust particles and microbes and uh, many other Uh, to uh, to get entered into external acoustic meatus they block uh, the all these uh, dust particles etc but the entrance point consists of large hairs long hair long hair are at entrance point as it goes uh, onward the hairs are going to be short and the hair on the cartilaginous surface are stiff strong and stiff while the hair on the bony part are not stiff or strong they they are fine hairs and uh, over hair on only on the superior or the um, the superior surface on the superior surface of the bony uh, acoustic meatus there there are fine hair not on the interior surface interior surface also consists of some hair but that 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 is very negligible in uh, number and the superior surface the inferior surface consists of negligible amount of negligible number of what no, negligible number of uh, fine hair and the in the superior surface consists of large number of fine hair while this consists of superiorly interiorly and laterally large number of stiff hairs and strong hair to avoid any and this particle to go through it now uh, what about the uh, these hair the these hair also consist of uh the sebaceous glands throughout uh, the external acoustic meatus sebaceous glands are there as i have mentioned or here sebaceous gland sebaceous gland are in the cartilaginous part as well as on the bony part of the external acoustic meatus but uh, there is another gland the ceruminous gland which is only present in the cartilaginous part the ceruminous gland i am going to uh, write it. this is important gland uh ceruminous gland which contain which contain a fluid that is called cerumen cerumen is a fluid that is secreted by the ceruminous gland ceruminous gland is actually a um, modified form of the sweat gland and sweat glands are of two types one is apocrine sweat gland and the uh eocrine sweat gland this is the apocrine uh, type of the sweat gland the apocrine part of uh, type of the sweat gland i am going to show you i have i have there in the picture also mm, this is the apocrine this one you can see over here that 
this is the sweat gland the sweat gland which opens through the hole of the hair not here the sweat gland which open through the hole of the hair that sweat gland is called what that is called apocrine sweat gland and the sweat gland which opens directly into the skin that is called eocrine sweat gland so the surface of the external acoustic meatus consist of this type of sweat gland this type of uh, gland not this type of gland but this gland is also not uh, uh, a normal apocrine sweat gland this is a modified form of sweat gland which is called seruminous gland the ear consists of modified uh, type of uh, sweat gland that is called seruminous gland which consists of which secrete uh, a sticky uh, type uh, sweat which secrete uh, uh, sticky sweat and this also consists of this gland this is called what this is called uh, sebaceous gland the ear also consists of sebaceous gland so the sebaceous gland secrete the sebum and the sweat gland secrete uh, the uh, seruminous gland secrete the serumin so the serumin and the sweat the serumin and the um, and the oil are the sebum the serumin and the sebum combine together with the epithelial cells epithelial cell which are shed from the surface the epithelial cell and form wax i'm going to write it this is uh, very important the wax that is called air wax are the wax of the ear so this wax is the combination of uh, uh, serumin this is the combination of uh, serumin plus sebum plus epithelial cells so the combination of epithelial the shedded the shed epithelial cell plus sebum plus serumin make what these make what these make the ear wax and ear wax is very important for the ear why this is important for the ear because uh, this avoid any any dust particle and any microbe and any insect it also kill the insect uh, which uh, uh, which goes through this internal external acoustic meatus that kill the microbe that kill the, um, uh, the um, that also kill the insects etc so this uh, there is another uh, wonderful thing in the external acoustic meatus that the epithelial cells of the um, of this external acoustic meatus are this uh, this uh, the, uh, the surface of this acoustic meatus the growth of these cells take place from internal surface to the external surface this grows from internal to external surface this uh, this do not grow just like normal skin the normal uh, the normal epithelial uh, surface of the other are the normal epidermis grow just like the uh, grow naturally in which it goes from lower surface to the upper surface it also grows from lower surface to the upper surface but the growth is not uh, vertical the growth of the skin is not vertical the growth is from this area to this area so it means that after a few months this surface is going to be exposed to this area and this surface is new uh, is renewed the the surface of this epithelial cell is going to expose to this area or to is going to reach from this area to this area after after few months not just like the normal skin the normal skin growth if, if this was normal skin then its growth its growth will be vertical its growth will be vertical it the normal skin its growth will be vertical so there will be a lot of chances to um, uh, to clodge this external acoustic meatus with the dust particle and many other microbes etc but uh, but this external acoustic meatus the the cell surface is growing from internal surface to external surface so it uh, it it shed out all the epithelial cell and it shed out all the uh, wax and it shed out all the dust particle to uh, to get rid through this uh, auditory orifice so uh, this is this was something special about this external uh, acoustic meatus now one other thing that uh, this bony structure this bone is the temporal bone 
this is the temporal bone of the external acoustic meatus and this temporal bone is having a modified structure that is called styloid process i am going to write it this is called styloid process styloid process is also very important this styloid process is um, uh, uh, this is the modified form of the um, temporal bone this is not uh, among the temporal bone in some books this is uh, categorized under the uh, temporal bone but this is not temporal but this is a separate bone which is uh, attached to the which is attached to the uh, temporal bone and this is styloid process and this styloid process do what this styloid process work as an anchor for variety of muscles of the face a variety of muscles of the face and throat goes and anchor with this uh, styloid process so when we are when we chew some food when we chew something uh, with the help of our teeth what happens this styloid process is going to move up and down when this styloid process is going to move up and up and down due to attached muscle with this styloid process what happens uh, this uh, external acoustic meatus or this uh, canal is also going to move up and down by moving up and down what happens this wick is also going to move from this surface to this area <coughs> so uh, sorry so the the chewing process uh, give this styloid process uh, upward and downward moment and that upward and downward moment do what it helps the wax to move out of the uh, external acoustic meatus and this was about the external acoustic meatus now coming towards the tympanic membrane tympanic membrane is a uh, you can say a translucent type membrane that is very thin and you can uh, you can see this membrane with the help of otoscope uh, by inserting the otoscope into the ear and by inserting the otoscope into the ear you can also see this bone this uh, which is attached with the uh, this uh, ossicle which is attached with this tympanic membrane so uh, onward this tympanic membrane or eardrum which start the middle ear start the middle ear consists of what the middle ear consists of ossicles three ossicles these ossicles are the malleus incus and stack and steps malleus incus and steps the malleus is a hammer like uh, bone the malleus is a hammer like bone uh, there, that is why this is called malleus malleus is the word which mean the hammer which mean hammer this is hammer hammer like structure and this incus incus is an anvil like uh, structure that's why this is called incus incus is anvil like structure i'm going to show you show you in the in the figure this this is hammer and this is the head of the hammer and this is the uh, manubrium of the hammer just like the the hammer of the ear uh, the ear also consists of uh, the head and the manubrium so the this also this also consists of head and manubrium this is the head and this is the manubrium and the second one was the second one is the anvil this is anvil on which this exists on which this is put the on which the hammer is put this this structure is called anvil so the shape of the anvil the shape of the incus is just like the anvil that is why this this is anvil the shape of this bone the shape of this bone is just like the anvil that is why this is called what that is why this is called uh this is called ancus and this ancus is having this is the body of the ancus and this is the lenticular process of the ancus this part of the ancus is called lenticular process and this is called the body of the ancus this is called the head of the, the malleus and this is called the uh, manubrium of the malleus similarly this structure the third bone which is the, the smallest bone in the body you can the uh, you can call it the smallest bone in the body the uh, steps and steps is just like the shape of stirrup that is why this is called step the shape of it resembles the shape of stirrup i'm going to show you the uh, the stirrup this this is stirrup this is stirrup and this is also a stirrup so the, this the shape of stirrup resembles the shape of the steps that is why this is called step steps mean stirrup so this stirrup also consists of a head, a neck, a crust, 
and foot flat this is the foot flat this is the crust this is the this is the neck and this is the head uh, now this steps is attached with the oval window this is attached with the oval window this is membranous window this membrane is just like the tympanic membrane this membrane is just like the tympanic membrane this medius is attached with the tympanic membrane with the help of ligaments large number of ligaments connect this uh, hammer or this medius with the tympanic membrane this medius is also connected with the incus with the help of ligaments and this incus is attached with the steps with the help of ligaments i have not made ligaments in the diagram uh, but uh, all of these bones are attached with the help of ligaments and this stirrup or this steps is attached with the oval window with the help of ligaments so what happens this oval window consists of a membrane just like the tympanic membrane uh, similarly uh, when the sound waves comes through this external acoustic meatus it strike with the tympanic membrane and with, when it strike with the tympanic membrane it start vibration when this tympanic membrane start vibration what happen this medius also start vibration when this medius start vibration this vibration is transferred to the incus and when incus start vibration this vibration is transferred to the steps and when this steps vi start vibration this vibration is transferred to the oval window and this when this oval window start vibration this vibration is tra transferred to the internal ear to a fluid in the internal ear i will uh, show you in the next lecture about the internal ear the external ear consists of air the middle ear also consists of ear air over here there is air and the pressure of the air over here is 760 millimeter the pressure of air is also 760 millimeter over here how it maintains the 760 millimeter of air over here this middle ear is connected with the nasopharynx over here this is connected with the pharynx with the help of a tube and that tube is called eustachian tube this is a tube the, the tube consists of epithelial cells and this epithel these epithelial cells are surrounded by the cartilaginous part, uh, cartilaginous structure. So this uh, cartilaginous tube which ranges from the, which connect the nasopharynx or the pharynx with the uh, middle ear to maintain the pressure, uh, the external and internal pressure. If uh, you, you people have noted that when we are going to uh, move from the earth to, to above to a hill, uh, when we are going upward from the earth uh, through vehicle or through various uh, conveyance so what happened the pressure above the earth is going to drop when the when the pressure is going to drop the pressure is decreasing the pressure of air when the pressure of air is decreasing when, when we are going upward what happens when we are moving in the aeroplane also what happened the pressure of air is decreasing when the pre pressure of air is decreasing for example the pressure of air drop externally uh, from 760 to 750 what will happen the internal the internally the pressure is 760 so the 10 millimeter of air will be evacuated this air will uh, leak out through this nasopharynx through this excitation tube to the nasopharynx so the, in, the internal pressure will also uh, become 750 but if the internal the external pressure is increasing if this is increasing from the 760 to 761 what will happen from 7 if this is increasing from 760 to 761 or from 770 to 780 or 780 to 781 what will happen the internal uh, pressure will also increase by absorbing the air from nasopharynx to the middle ear so when uh, when it, when you are going to absorb the air from middle from the nasopharynx to the middle ear or when we are going when we are going to evacuate the air from this middle ear to this uh, nasopharynx what happen at that point we are um, uh, we are, we are going to feel some uh, tingling we are going to feel some uh, some some sensation inside our middle ear uh, so that sensation or ringing of sound uh, is due to the uh, to maintain the pressure externally and internally uh, one uh, other thing that is also very important uh, the muscles which are attached to the uh, manubrium of the hammer this hammer is attached with the muscle and this muscle is called 
tensor tympani this is the tem tensor tympani this tem tensor tympani the tendon of this tem tensor tympani is attached with the manubrium and the uh, another tendon the this, this the tendon of the tendon of this muscle tensor tympani is also attached with the uh, with this cartilage so with the cartilage which are, which is all around the eustachian tube so this muscle do what this muscle maintain this tympanic membrane in tense form that is why this is called tensor tympani i am going to write the name of this muscle this is very important muscle uh, tensor tympani so what is the function of tensor tympani the t function of tensor tympani is to maintain this tympanic membrane in tense form it uh, maintain this tympanic membrane in tense form and when this tympanic membrane start vibration by by sound uh, when this start vibration what happen uh, this uh, this convert the vibration or this transfer the vibration to the medius and this medius transfer the vibration to the incus and this into stirrup and into oral window and into the fluid or uh, the perilymph so what happened after uh, after few milliseconds, this uh, tensor tympani is contracted. This short contraction, and it due to the contraction of this tensor tympani, uh, this vibration is uh, the vibration produced in this uh, tympanic membrane is uh, annulled or uh, this is nullified. This is stopped. This is inhibited. The vibration of this uh, tympanic membrane is inhibited by this tensor tympani. There is another muscle uh, which is also called stapedius. This is the smallest muscle in the body uh, which is attached with the bone. This is called stapedius muscle. And this stapedius muscle is attached with the neck of the staves. And this is also to maintain uh, it, this, tense, this uh, stapedius muscle also uh, get contracted after the vibration is transferred to the oval window when the vibration is transferred to the oval window this is contracted and when this is contracted this is this is no more transferring the vibration to the oval window because the vibration has been transferred that is sufficient for the, you know, to hear the sound when the vibration is transferred there is no need to transfer other another vibration so this stop the vibration for a while and when and then wait for another sound wave to come and uh, vibrate these ossicles so these three are combined called ossicle one uh, the, the important mechanism inside this um, or function of this tensor tympani is to or uh, stapedius is to um, to avoid any damage to avoid any damage to this uh, tympanic membrane and oval window and the whole ear it avoid uh, during very uh, sharp sound or during very loud sound when this tympanic membrane is going to uh, vibrate very heavily during very heavy sound what will happen this uh, start at tympanic reflex that is called tympanic reflex tympanic reflex is a phenomena in which the tympanic the tensor tympani and the stapedius muscle uh, is contracted this is contracted and this is uh, and this is not relaxed uh, after uh, after few milliseconds this is not relaxed this get contracted and this make these uh, ossicle in contracted form these make these ossicle combined together uh, to avoid any vibration of these sound during very loud sound uh, why to avoid any damage to the to avoid any damage to the to the you know, to the internal ear or middle ear or external ear also so this is uh, this is called tympanic reflex uh, this uh, this muscle is attached with this tympanic reflex is uh, start by a nerve and this tympanic uh, tensor tympani is attached with the neuron and that neuron uh, is responsible for this uh, motor neuron is responsible since sensory and motor neuron both are responsible for this uh, tympanic reflex and that uh, neuron or that nerve is nerve number five that is called trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve is responsible for uh, for the sensitization of this uh, this muscle trigeminal nerve or innervation of this muscle is provided by the trigeminal nerve uh, while the innervation of this muscle is uh, provided by the uh, nerve number seven that is uh, facial nerve uh, stapedius muscle is provided by the facial nerve and the tr uh, trigeminal nerve give innervation to the tensor tympani